Hold on, Carlo, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Carol, what are you doing? I'm trying to juggle the balls, but oh, I can't. Oh dear. I can't manage. Our farmers are juggling so many things in the Shamba. Mm -hmm. The crops, the soil, the livestock, and so many other things. Not forgetting taking care of the family. Welcome, Welcome to, to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in the western county of Bungoma. My name is Edith Ndiwa. I'm 29 years old. Farming is all my life, and farming is everything. And I plan to do farming the rest of my life. I have three children two girls and one boy. When they grow up, I wish for them to become better farmers than us. My name is Zakari Jaka. I'm 44 years old. I'm very happy to be a farmer because my parents were farmers. I think they are very happy to see their son continuing with what they used to do, to enjoy to do. Edith and Zakayo have eight acres of land with passion fruits, coffee, bananas, and sweet potatoes. They also have eight beehives, two dairy cows, and some chicken. Edith and yes, Zakayo, very yes. nice to be here. Yes. yes. Edith, yes. you're a nurse. Yeah. How do you manage to juggle nursing, uh, children, you know, and, and farming? For me, I try to create time. So when I'm off or when I'm resting, I try to go to the farm and spend time there in my farm. <laughs> How is farming here, Edith? We've been doing our best here, but we have some challenges, mm -hmm. especially with the soil. So normally when we plant crops, they dry off and we don't know really the reason behind it. Mm -hmm. ah. And then also beekeeping. beekeeping. We have a lot of challenge there. We are here now and we'll work with you to make sure we overcome some of those challenges. Caro, yes. who have we come with? We've come with experts. Okay. You'll ask any question, I'm sure they'll have answers. Okay. But uh, before they get here, we need to pitch our tent. Okay. So if you give us some time, we go pitch the tent, prepare, and then we come ready for work. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. All, right. All right, see you in a bit. Bye. See you. Edith? Yes, Tony? Ah, there you are. Now, I didn't have any breakfast this morning. Oh, too bad for you. C could you be having some bread and maybe some honey? That yes, I can enjoy? there is bread. But the bad news is there is no honey. Why? I've seen lots and lots of beehives. Yeah, there is beehives, but I really don't know what the problem is. I think I can fix that. Yeah. Come with me. Okay. Edith is having trouble with her bees, and we need an expert to help. Benjamin Cheptai from Mountain Berean is a man for the job. Benjamin, now Edith has some challenges here, which I think can be able to sort out. Now Edith, last honey harvest, how many kilos did you get? From one beehive. I think it was less than 5 kg. Were you happy with that? No, no, no. Benjamin, how many kilos should a farmer expect from one beehive? You are supposed to harvest 10 kilograms of honey per hive. What do you think went wrong for you to get such low harvest? When I installed the hives, whenever the bees entered, there were some insects that tried to compete with the bees in the beehive. Benjamin, you have inspected our beehives. What do you think cost that low harvest? Your apiary is not in good condition. If you can see, 
the apiary is bushy, so you need to slash that bush that have covered your beehives. That bush will encourage the best to invest your apiary. If the beehive is uh, invested with pest, you realize that uh, the bees will consume all honey in your beehive. So, the first problem is that the bushes surrounding the hives have attracted insects which have invaded the hives. When this happens, the bees eat their own honey and leave the hive. But are there any other reasons for the lack of honey? Another thing you cited in a place whereby there is no water source around there. Another thing, I'm not seeing enough forage for your bees okay. to extract uh, that is pollen and nectar. Okay. To enable the bees to be more productive, we need to build an apiary to protect the hives from high temperatures and rain. The apiary needs to be located near a water source and somewhere quiet, away from the farm activity and at least 100 meters from the nearest house. If we construct our apiary almost to the passion fruits, they will source the pollen and the nectar from the passion fruits when they flower. Another thing, you need to do what we call regular inspection to see whether the pests are inside or whether the honey is ready for harvesting. And the farmer benefits from the honey. Exactly. So everybody benefits. Yeah. yeah. The bees, the, the passion, passion fruits, and, the farm. and Edith here. It's a win-win situation. The passion fruits, like any other flowering plants or trees, will provide pollen and nectar that the bees need to make honey. But first, we need to build an apiary to protect the hives from the heat of the sun and the rain and unwanted visitors such as thieves and large animals. Let's get to work. When people get sick, they go to the hospital, get tested and get treatment. It's no different with our soil. If you want better yield, then Soil testing is very, very important. Anthony Nandunga, Daktari wa Udongo from Crop Nuts, came to Edith and Zakayo's farm a week ago to take soil samples for testing and is here with the results for their maize crop. We have the soil doctor here, Anthony. Yes. What are the results? The phosphorus level were too low. Uh, when we come to the total nitrogen, it was as well low. When uh, planting, uh, we recommended that uh, Zakaya should use diammonium phosphate, that is DAP, mm -hmm. at a rate of uh, 35 kg per acre. Maize needs phosphorus in the soil to grow healthy roots and nitrogen for healthy leaves. On top of the usual 50 kilograms of DAP needed by maize, Zakaya should add 35 kilograms in order to make up for the lack of phosphorus. That means he will use a total of 85 kilograms of DAP. The same applies for nitrogen. 50 kilograms is the standard recommendation, but since this nutrient is also low, Zakayo should add an additional 20 kilograms, making it 70 kilograms of nitrogen. And when it comes to top dressing, we recommended urea, and that is 20 kilos per acre. I've been using it more than that, eh? but the yield is... Uh still not the good. same yeah. or not improving. Yeah. Uh, overusing doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the farmer is going to get uh, more mm -hmm. when it comes to harvesting. One thing with the excessive use of fertilizer, it interlocks the nutrients available for that particular crop mm -hmm. to absorb it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Using too much fertilizer can give you less yield. This is because it makes the soil acidic or alkaline changing the nutrients into a form that plants cannot absorb. Nutrients are most available to plants if the soil pH is neutral, between 5.5 and 7.5. So, doing a soil test will tell you exactly what nutrients your soil needs and the right amount of fertilizer to add for each crop you're growing. So, are we clear? 
Um, we know what's ailing our soil yes, and we have the solution. Yeah, now we know. All right, thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you, too. Oh, yeah. Zakayo. Yes. Earlier, Zakayo told us that the two dairy cows graze outside as their shelter is in a bad way and needs rebuilding. I can see this is a problem when it rains. The cows have no protection and that is not good for milk production. Let's see what Kamau can do so as to shape up the shelter. Go Kamau! Now Edith and Zakayo's soil needs fertilizing to bring it back to health. But what kind of fertilizer should they choose? Since Edith and Zak keep bees, organic fertilizers may be a good idea as sometimes too much fertilizer left in the soil can be harmful to bees. So, a vast organic fertilizer expert, Benson Gaire, from Regen Organics, makers of Evergrow, to tell us more about organic fertilizers. So, Benson, what have you observed? Yeah, I have observed the yellowing, his crops, some uh, fruits drying up. The flowering has been affected. Okay. There is a lot of flower bush mm -hmm. in his crop. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what would you recommend? I would recommend him to use uh, organic fertilizer. What organic fertilizer? Uh, organic fertilizer is uh, where we only use agricultural waste for the production of uh, the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. The organic fertilizer will be able to treat his soil for it to absorb the nutrients which have been uh, bonded in the soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Like now, when it was very, very dry, uh, some of his crops were drying up. Organic fertilizer comes up with 30% uh, of the moisture. Mm -hmm. So it will help in water retention. Uh, the other one is uh, it will reduce the acidity. In the soil? In the soil. Okay. The uh, organic fertilizer helps a lot in uh, water retention, uptake of the nutrients, mm -hmm. especially the ones which are supplied by the compound fertilizers. Mm -hmm. It improves the soil structure. That means the soil goes back to its original form. And with the local production of uh, organic fertilizer, we are able to distribute it in a cost-effective way mm -hmm. uh, for it to reach the farmers. Okay, yeah. so it's quite affordable. It is quite affordable. Ah. Organic matter in organic fertilizer acts as a sponge to absorb and hold water for longer, and the crops can use the water as they grow. It also helps improve soil structure. For example, in clay soils, it will help increase the spaces between the soil particles, making it possible for water to easily drain. So, to apply organic fertilizer to your passion food crops, measure one kilogram of organic fertilizer per stem. Caro, remember, always dig a trench of 15 centimeters to 20 centimeters away from the passion fruit plant. Mix the fertilizer in with the soil around the tree. Thank you very much, Benson. That was quite a demonstration. And I am sure Zakayo has followed every bit. Thank you very much. Okay. We always say, feed the soil. Mm -hmm. The soil will feed the plant. Then the plant will feed the world. Ah, I like that. <laughs> Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makweni and Kajado, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm in the week. The lower parts of Garissa, however, will get up to 15 mm of total rains. The coastal counties will get moderate rains ranging up to 25 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale. Tana River and Taita Taveta, however, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm in the week, with some areas getting up to 15 mm. Most of the central Kenya counties will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. This includes Moranga, Kirinyaga, Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu. However, Nyeri and Nyandara will get up to 25 mm of total rains. The north, central and south Rift Valley counties will have moderate rains of up to 50 mm across the week. 
This cuts across West Pokot, Baringo, Marrakwet, Wasingishu, Kericho, Bomet, Nakuru to Narok. However, Trukana in Samburu will see light showers of less than 5 mm. The western Nyanza regions will as well get moderate levels of rains ranging between 15 to 50 mm in the week. This includes counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri. For more tips and detailed weather forecasts for your area, get in touch with I Shamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Ship of Farming News for Kenya. Hey there. Do you want more information on the topics being discussed on Shamba Shape Up? We are bringing you the Shamba Shape Up podcast where you can get farming information and tips anywhere, anytime. Join us as we discuss good farming practices and dig deeper. Now, where do you get this podcast? Easy. WhatsApp the word podcast to iShamba on 0748-153-120 to get a link to the podcast. You can also Google us, Shamba Shape Pop Podcast. Tundekazi. What have you been up to? <sighs> We've done soil test and I am sure with the organic uh, fertilizer, the passion fruits are going to do very well. Ah, and yes. passion fruits are great for the bees. Mm -hmm. Coming up after the break... How to manage your beans to get the best harvest and a new way of selling sweet potatoes. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. We are in Bungoma in Western Kenya with Edith and Zakayo. We found out how bees and passion fruits can help each other and how to apply organic fertilizer. Next, how to manage a young bean crop and growing sweet potatoes for business. Well then, let's go to work. Let's go. Feeding your family from your crops is great, but if you need to make money from it, you need expert advice. And that's where we come in. It is not enough to just plant your seeds and hope for the best. Crops need constant management if they are to do well. I've invited Millicent Barasa from Bubai Product Limited to see how Zakayo's bean crop is doing and how it can be improved. Millicent. Yes. Very nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Tony. <laughs> All right. Now, Zakayo. Yes. For how long have you been planting beans? Okay, I've been planting beans for five years. How has the journey been? Uh, okay, it has been good. Because eh? it, uh, it has enabled me to feed my family. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Have you sold any in the market? I've sold a little. Like how many uh, kilos? Or how many bags? Uh, I can say about two bags. Two bags? Which is not enough. Still not enough? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Millicent, you've observed uh, Zakayo's beans. What have you seen? The first thing you're observing in Zakayo's field on spacing, again, it's not the recommended rate. Between row to row, you're supposed to space at 50 centimeters apart, and between one plant to another one, you have to do 13 centimeters. If you are growing beans on their own, then space the rows 50 centimeters apart and the plants 13 centimeters apart. Zakayo's beans are intercropped with coffee and should be between the main crop at least 60 centimeters away from the coffee rows. What else have you seen? The other thing I've seen, the weed management is a bit poor. Mm -hmm. You know weeds compete for the plants, the nutrients. As you can see, even germination is uneven because the weeds are already competing with the germinating crop. To keep the seedlings healthy, make sure you weed regularly. This will ensure your crops get enough nutrients from the soil. Without enough nutrients, they will be too weak to resist pests and diseases. Any signs of diseases and pests? So actually what you can observe from here, most of the crops have been attacked by the cutworms. Cutworms are really a menace as per now. They go cut the stems from the 
near the root zone and then affect the crop. So the crop will not continue coming up. To control cutworms, drench the soil soon after planting with insecticides like Ambligo at a rate of 10 milliliters in 20 liters of water. What should Zakayo do next now on his crop? From the weeding, he's supposed to do the first preventive spraying to protect the crop against the pests and the diseases. After you have done the preventive spraying, there is what we call top dressing. So top dressing is done 30 days after planting. So, to keep your seedlings healthy, 30 days after planting, give them a top dressing of fertilizer. Do this before the crop flowers. After flowering, no activity should take place until the pods form to avoid flower fall. Millicent, what would you recommend Zakayo to do next time he's planting beans? The most important thing. The most important thing Zakayo is supposed to do is to source your seed from the right place. Yes. Maybe just to ask, where mm -hmm. did you get your seed last time? The seed comes from my farm. Mm -hmm. You reuse yes. the seed? I reuse the seed. Wow. Yes. Though that's not the appropriate way to go. What you're supposed to do is to get yourself certified seed, like this we have here. You can see it's certified by KFIS. The most important thing you're supposed to get, source your seed from a certified company. Why do you advise uh, this seed variety? So the first thing why I recommend for you this seed variety, it, it really does well in this region. And then the productivity, its productivity is really high. For instance, for now, under good crop management, you'll get, you'll get up to one ton. The expected yield is one ton per acre. One ton is 1,000 kilograms. This translates to 11 to 12 90 kilogram bags of beans per acre. The second thing is it's tolerant to some diseases. For instance, the root rot will not experience, the blight will not be that adverse. The fourth thing is this variety or nutrition value, it's rich in iron. To combat the effects of climate change in your region, use a seed recommended for the amount of rainfall in your area. To find out more, contact Aishamba on 0711082606. Do they taste good? Yeah, they really taste good. They are so yummy. So do you have some we can try? Yeah, I carried some for you. We can give you to cook later. Okay, yeah. let's go. I can't wait to test the iron-rich bean variety once it has cooked them up. Meanwhile, it looks as if the cow shelter is ready. Just as well, because it could rain at any time. But not before we meet one more expert, Gabriel Litunya from the Kakamega County Youth Agripreneurs Association has come to give Edith some advice on getting her sweet potatoes to market. So, Gabriel, yes, I know you've done your inspection. Yes, you've seen our sweet potatoes. Tell us how are we doing? Are we doing well, or we need to improve? We are doing well. I also noted that Edith was a little bit affected by the drought that was there. Otherwise, the potatoes will be ready by now, mm -hmm. but okay. they have started coming up well. So what are your expectations with your sweet potatoes? So from this farm, I expect to harvest some good potatoes here, mm -hmm. and then to make some good cash. Some good cash? Yes. How much does a bag cost in the market? So we shall just negotiate. You negotiate? Yeah, we so just we have... negotiate with the buyer. Ah, with the buyer. Yeah. So they are middlemen. You don't even know how much it's going to be. Yeah. Is that the right way? You really need to know what exact quantities do you need to harvest mm -hmm. per acre so that you don't have that opportunity to start negotiating with the buyers because they'll exploit you. Currently, we are working on a standard price that we want to give to our farmers and for ours, we are buying at 30 shillings per kg. Uh, most farmers don't understand the kg, they understand the sacks. Mm. So, averagely, we have been able to start uh, negotiating with the farmer, talking to the farmer and training them to understand that they need to sell their potatoes in cages. Okay. Cages. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. That is where the money is. That's the where, yes. 
Selling your potatoes by kilograms rather than by sack will mean you can make more money as you're able to negotiate an exact price. So Edith, for you to make money in sweet potato, the best way is to give you a guaranteed market in form of contract so that you can be able to enjoy uh, doing your farming. I have good news for Edith. We are going to provide the market for all her sweet potato. Wow. All? All. And that also, we are giving her an opportunity to expand uh, to another level where she can be able to reach because our demand is big. Thank you. I don't know whether you were expecting to sell the vines or to feed the animals. What were you planning to do with the vines? To sell the vines. To sell the vines. To sell the vines. She knows how to look for money. Good. Uh -huh. So uh, we have a big demand for the vines. Mm -hmm. And if you maintain them very well, we are going to buy all of them in two weeks' time. That is great. How about that? Oh, that is great. I'm so happy. You're happy? Very. Can you imagine ready market? That is good news. When they are ready, they just harvest and they are sold. Plus the vines. Good nice news. one. May it happen. Shall. <laughs> For young farmers like Edith, a contract with a company is a good idea. If she follows his advice on best agricultural practice, she will have a guaranteed market for her crop. Gabrielle is going to maximize her income by selling the sweet potato vines as well as the potatoes. It's another win-win. And the beehives are shaped up. The new apiary has been constructed next to the passion fruits. And the old hives have been harvested and cleaned out and relocated. We have happy bees and happy passion fruits. And Edith has cooked up the iron-rich beans for us all to taste. Mmm, yummy! Mmm, mm. Tony! Wow! Mm. Nice beans. Have you ever tasted this variety before? No, uh, we've never. never. What do you think of it? It's so very delicious. tasty sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know how to keep a secret? Yes. Did you keep our secret? Yes, I kept it. Ah, that's good. So now is the time to now reveal the secret. Okay. Are you ready, Mr. Zakayo? We are taking your wife away. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that. So, Edith, it's time for you to disclose. So, one of the experts of sweet potatoes, when he visited our farm, he said that you'll be buying all the potatoes uh, together with their vines. Wow. Yeah. You mean with all, all the vines? Yeah, all the vines and all the potatoes. <laughs> Ready market. So that means a lot of money. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It is it. So I think our work here is done, Tony. Our work here is done. Yes. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you in the, the next Shamba. Shamba. Bye.